one Holy Spirit. And bless thee, our Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. from the book of Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will gather to you, so I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them up to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch. And he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. 
In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Let's pray together. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands, remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Holy and Undivided Trinity. Amen. It's almost impossible to hear our second lesson from Ephesians without thinking of where we and our conflicted nation are today. We hear that Christ has broken down the dividing wall and I am very tempted to turn this sermon into a political tract. After all, it's pretty clear that St. Paul, or whoever wrote Ephesians in Paul's name, doesn't think much of building walls. But we've been hearing repeatedly about building walls ever since our current president launched his candidacy. And in the last several weeks, one result of that very campaign promise is that we have been inundated with heart-wrenching images of separated families. Our own cathedral's response made international headlines when it placed the Holy Family itself behind a wall, that is, a fenced enclosure. It went viral. In fact, I was in a meeting with union organizers in California last week, when, and when somebody introduced me as the priest from the Episcopal Church in Indianapolis, everybody said, oh, that church. We also have our own presiding bishop's response. He said, God does not condone our attack on immigrants. Jesus says, love your neighbor. Jesus says, love your enemy. Jesus says, welcome the stranger. How can America call itself a Christian country if it treats children like this? So our cathedral, Bishop Curry, and St. Paul are on the same page here. Building walls to divide us from them is contrary to God's dream made flesh in Jesus. Let's face it, the gospel of God's all-embracing love in Jesus Christ does have political implications. There's nothing apolitical about our baptismal covenant, our promise to strive for justice and peace among all people, and to respect the dignity of every human being. And that ought to make us turn a critical eye, not just on our current immigration laws, but on the whole history of our immigration laws and the motives behind them. 
Do you know the title of our very first federal law to limit immigration? It was the Chinese Exclusion Act, passed in 1882. Do I even need to argue that this was not an example of respecting the dignity of every human being? The gospel does have political implications. So yes, I am very tempted to turn this sermon into a political tract, a left-leaning political tract that would leave me, at least, utterly satisfied with my knee-jerk left-leaning ways. But I can't do that with this lesson. Because Paul, we'll still call him Paul, even though we're not sure who wrote this letter, Paul is not writing about a physical wall that may or may not get built someday. He's not writing about immigration laws because there weren't any immigration laws in his day. He's writing, uh, writing about the dividing wall that was around long before any immigration laws existed. The wall that still plagues us today. The wall of hostility. Dividing walls and excluding laws are a symptom of that wall, the hostility between us. We know how to break down a physical wall. It may not be easy, but we know how it can be done. And we know how to overturn an unjust immigration law. That's definitely not easy, especially these days. But we do know how that can be done. But what if that wall is the hostility between us? What if it's the hostility that I create if I issue a self-righteous political tract and treat anybody who doesn't agree with me as not quite a full member of the body of Christ? How do we break down that wall? Do we even know how it can be done? We might think we know how, but don't be so sure. Here's how groups divided by hostility typically manage to come together. They come to decide they're not each other's enemies by focusing on another enemy. They tear down one dividing wall by keeping another one in place. It's still us versus them. The only thing that's changed is that some of the them are now inside the wall with us. There are still plenty of thems left over. You might join hundreds of other Episcopalians in this diocese carrying the Episcopal church flag in the pride parade but then unfriend somebody on Facebook for making a less than supportive comment about it. One dividing wall torn down, another built up. Who knows how to break that cycle? Paul's message is that even when we don't know how to break down our own dividing walls, God is breaking them down anyway. Through Christ's body, that is, through the likes of us, trying to put up with one another even when we disagree. The whole message of this letter to the Ephesians is that in Christ, God is moving all of us, yes, all of us, and all of them, Democrats, Republicans, Socialists, Libertarians, people who are sick of political debates, all of us and all of them toward a reconciliation that we don't even know how to imagine. Paul calls it a mystery, which is his way of letting us know that he doesn't know how to imagine it either. But just because we can't imagine it, doesn't mean it isn't happening anyway. Paul knows it involves a cross. 
It involves Christ sharing the pain our hostility causes, absorbing it and moving us beyond it. And since we are Christ's body, it involves us sharing that pain, absorbing it, and moving beyond it. We may not know how it works, but Paul says it's working anyway, right here, right now, because God is at work in all of us and all of them. During our general convention earlier this month, Bishop Curry showed up at another protest of our current immigration policies. What he said there goes beyond simply protesting. We do not come to put anybody down, he said. We come to lift everybody up. We come in love. We come in love because we follow Jesus. And Jesus taught us love. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor. Love your liberal neighbor. Love your conservative neighbor. Love your democratic neighbor. Love your Republican neighbor. Love your independent neighbor. Love your neighbor who you don't like. Love the neighbor you disagree with. Love your Christian neighbor. Love your Muslim neighbor. Love your Jewish neighbor. Love your Palestinian neighbor. Love your Israeli neighbor. Love your refugee neighbor. Love your immigrant neighbor. Love the prison guard neighbor. Love your neighbor. True words. Words to remember. Did they break down the wall of hostility in our country? Hardly. But they point us to the God who in Christ is breaking down that wall anyway, even when we can't imagine how it's done. And they point us to ourselves as Christ's body, who are somehow being made into a holy temple, a dwelling place for God. Christ has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. That's why we're here, trying to put up with one another, not always succeeding, but opening ourselves to what God can do through us when we receive Christ's broken body into our conflicted hands. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God,
In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families and friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of honor, fear, justice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for the Dial, Dickinson, and Edwardson Sirlon families and for those who serve on our altar guild. We pray for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. Stephen's New Harmony. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jennifer, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. Especially remembering those on our prayer list. Lily. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. And thanksgiving for Kathy. We will exalt you, O God, our King. Praise your name. Especially remembering the family of the of Tia in the boat accident. We pray for all those who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them to put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
I'd like to welcome Father Charles Allen, who is, we've decided to say it's okay to say we are old friends, uh, chronologically and otherwise. Charles was at All Saints when I was there. And Charles is the chaplain for Butler University and IUPUI as far as campus ministry. So send him a few dollars every now and then through campus ministry. Keeps Charles employed at the, at the uh, um, Starbucks. Yeah. That's where his office is. So, and I, just a little personal note, Charles's homilies have multiple layers. They're fabulous, and we only pick up the first layer. So uh, get on the podcast for Holy Family and just spend some time with his, with his homilies. Uh, they're incredibly wonderful. School supplies are due next Sunday. Please place all supplies in the basket in the narthex, and I will make sure that those go to a school in IPS um, that is uh, needing a lot of help. So I will haul those out, and um, there's also, I may split them with a school in uh, Hamilton County that also needs a bunch of help too. So we'll, we'll make sure anything that you donate gets into the hands of children. Chad, uh, Chad has an announcement to make. Yes, uh, the brothers of uh, Thank you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. In your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffer in death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be in peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, bless you forevermore. <laughs>